Welcome to External CA Integration with Istio Explained. My name is Lin Sang. I'm the director of open source with Solo.io. I've been a founding Istio TOC and steering committee member, been with the Israel project for a very long time. Uh, I'm also a CNCF ambassador. I wrote a book around Istio. Uh, I'm so excited to talk to you about this topic today. Uh, Josh, do you want to also introduce yourself? Yeah, great. Uh, yeah, hi everyone. I'm Josh. Um, I'm an engineer at Jetstack. Um, I work on the Cert Manager project um, and also worked on Istio CSR, uh, which we'll talk about um, a bit later. That's great. awesome. You. Thank you, Josh. I am so excited to do this talk with you. Um, so let's start to talk about Istio default, which is everybody runs if you are using Istio default profile, right? So if you run in the default profile, when Istio D um, starts, it's going to check if the CA search secrets exist in your Istio D uh, namespace, which is by default uh, Istio system namespace. And if not, it's going to generate a self-signed uh, certificate uh, for Istio D to use. So that's how the default uh, is going to work. Um, unfortunately, this is not really recommended because uh, many organizations have existing PKI infrastructure, right? They want to reuse their existing PKI infrastructure and then be able to plug that uh, using uh, Istio when they add their services uh, to the mesh. So next. So let's take a little bit dive into how the self-signed certs, uh, how the self-signed root CA works. So it's going to generate the Istio CA secret uh, in the Istio system namespace by default. Um, it's also creating a config map called Istio CA root cert uh, in the Istio system namespace. Um, next, if you, um, if you kind of poke around of the config map of the root search, uh, you can see, you know, it's issued by cluster.local. So this is the self-signed uh, root search we're talking about by default. It's typically valid for 10 years, right? From uh, 2022 to 2032. And it also contains like the, the PKI infrastructure in this root search. So that's how self-signed works. Now let's talk about how the trust is distributed to the workloads, right? To the sidecar. So your services running in the mesh can leverage that to do like mutual TLS um, or um, request uh, RBAC. So uh, the way you think about trust distribution, an important element is the config map. Uh, so we talk about the Istio CA root search config map in the Istio system, right? So uh, what Istio D does as a control plane, it has a namespace controller. Uh, it's going to copy that Istio CA root search into every single namespace, uh, regardless whether this namespace is in the mesh. So if you look at this uh, uh, screenshot, I created that full namespace. And uh, even though the full namespace, uh, Josh, I think you are a little bit ahead. Uh, yes, thank you. I created a full namespace, even though the full namespace, I haven't even add the sidecar injection label or anything. It automatically, Istio D automatically copies the Istio CA root search in uh, config Mac in the full namespace. Certainly Istio control plane is smart to exclude some namespaces such as like cube system, cube public, so you don't see um, the, the, the config map in those namespace. Uh, next. So the way the trust distribution works is uh, when Istio D starts, uh, it's going to, we talk about, it's going to uh, copy, uh, check out the existing namespace, copy the Istio uh, CA root search config map to each of the namespace. And then when the moment you as a user to deploy a service like web service or uh, recommendation service into a namespace in your Kubernetes cluster, uh, the moment the sidecar is injected, uh, the 
we're going to um, craft the injector is going to craft the YAML to have um, the Istio CA research mounted to the Istio agent, um, which is also mounted to the Istio proxy so that they can have access to the root search. Uh, next. So essentially, Istio agent is going to send a certificate signing request to Istio D to get the private key signed. So Istio agent is going to generate that private key in memory and then send the certificate signing request to get the key signed. The private key would never leave the pods and it's not persisted either. So at the startup time, uh, it does this uh, to keep the key secure. By default, the workload uh, cert expires in 24 hours. However, you may be wondering, you know, how does the rotation work, right? We're not going to wait until 24 hours to rotate your certs because your certs would expire, right? So the workload certs typically expires, uh, typically rotates half of the time before it expires, which is 12 hours. And it's actually configurable in Istio through a pilot agent, uh, which is also Istio agent environment variable called secret uh, grace period ratio and the default value is 0.5 which is the 12 hours um, how does that come from uh, next there are two ways if you're not happy with the default self-signed uh, generated root cert there are two ways to plug in your own certificate for uh, istio ca so the first way is through ca certs um, as a secret. The second way is to configure it with the Istio Operators API, uh, essentially through the mesh config.ca certificates configuration. So let's take a quick look at how that could be done. Uh, with CA certs, um, essentially you as an admin, you would be populate the CA certs secret in the Istio D um, default uh, installation um, namespace, which is the Istio system. And that C CA search secrets is going to be ingested by Istio D at the Istio D startup time. So that's the first thing it checks, whether the CA search exists. Uh, we talk about if it doesn't exist, it use self sign. If it exists, it's going to leverage that. Um, so essentially, the CA search secret are break down to uh, like four portions of different files. It has the generated intermediate certificate. It has the generated um, intermediate key. It also have the generated certificate uh, chain, which is used by the ECOD, and also the root cert, which is the config map we talked about earlier that's distributed to every single namespace uh, in your Kubernetes cluster. So basically, this behaves pretty much as the self-signed, except that you got to bring your own uh, intermediate um, certificate, and those could be generated from your existing PKI infrastructure, So, which is very nice. Um, also, um, in last year, we added support for SUD to react on CA search change without needing to restart uh, SUD. So we, we have code now to constantly monitor the CA search secrets and be able to change it as long as the root search are not changed, the intermediate search, uh, if it's changed, uh, we have the capability to automatically pick it up. Uh, next. With mesh config, this is uh, an additional method for you to plug in your actual root search, right? So in this case, you as an admin, um, at the, the Istio installation time, you config your mesh configuration, and then through the the root, the CA certificates are configured uh, during the installation time, which Istio D would read it from the config map. Um, the is typically it's called Istio config map in the Istio system namespace, and then the CA certificates are pushed over XDS uh, from Istio D to Istio agent so that the, your workload, the proxy, can get um, the additional root search uh, in this case. So uh, next is an example of how the configuration works, right? So essentially, you can uh, just specify your Spiffy bundle URL and also the, the 
the actual root search. Um, so um, very easy to use. It's declarative, so you can use it at SEO installation or upgrade time to specify the additional root search. This scenario could be very useful if you have uh, maybe a multi-cluster environment, or maybe you are kind of transition to a, uh, to a different uh, root uh, so that you can specify this additional root search. Uh, next. Now, the question I want to ask you to think through is, can you plug in multiple CA search for Istio D? Yes, with this approach, uh, with uh, the mesh config that CA certificate approach, you can plug in additional uh, multiple CA uh, root search uh, for your workload to workload the communication. So um, this is a, this is very helpful if you uh, have a requirement uh, during transition or in a multi cluster environment where the, uh, when you need to federate uh, the trust. Next, now the next question. I'll, you probably been wondering is you know these two methods are great but can they coexist right what if i have them coexist so how is it still going to handle uh, the good news is they can coexist so the mesh config.ca certificates is a uh, for you to provide additional um, root search. So you could potentially use in CA uh, search to specify uh, your root search, uh, your key, your private key, your intermediate search, and then also on top of that, using uh, mesh config CA search um, to plug in additional root search. So uh, it still supports all that. Next, uh, I want to quickly talk about RA and CA because when I started looking at um, external CA, CA integration with Istio, uh, these are the concepts that I stumped on. So I thought some of you might also be stumped on. So registration authority, um, the key role is to approve requests, right? So the certificate signing request when it comes in, it needs to someone to be there to say whether this is a valid request, whether whoever is asking the request should be granted on this request. So um, that's the role for the RA. And the certificate authority is to sign the workload search, right? So after the request gone through the registration authority, the request is forwarded typically to a certificate authority to sign uh, the workload search. So by default, ECOD works as registration authority and certificate authority. So it does both of these jobs all together for you. Next, I'm going to pass to Josh to talk about Kubernetes uh, CSR integration. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Lynn. Um, yeah, great. Yeah, so um, indeed, I'm going to start talking about um, different um, other plugin options uh, we have um, beyond the uh, kind of CA certs and, and, and plugging in, or what have you. Um, so the first one is Kubernetes CSR. Um, so in this setup, um, Istio D works as the RA, so the registration authority. Um, uh, so yeah, it's validating the incoming certificate signing requests. Um, but in the um, through this option, we can uh, get either the Kubernetes um, control plane CA or some other custom CA to act as the CA. Uh, so we can get it signed through the Kubernetes control plane or indeed some external CA, um, whether it be you know Vault or what have you. Um, and what's neat about uh, this option is that the private key uh, is, isn't present in the Kubernetes cluster. Um, so we were mentioning before about um, the CA certs being plugged in through a secret. Well, with this option, that it, it, that's not the case, it, it, that they aren't held in kind of cluster state. Um, it's worth noting with this option uh, that it's currently labeled as experimental um, on the Istio docs. Um, so before um, jumping straight into Kubernetes CSR, it's worth going through um, the CSR object itself in Kubernetes. Um, so CSR is a certificate signing request, and this is a core uh, API object in, in Kubernetes, so the same as um, a, a any other object. And the intention with this uh, object is indeed, of course, to, to, to sign uh, X509 certificate requests. 
Um, so the way that this flow works is you'd have uh, typically a service A or perhaps QTTL, something like this, and they will create this CSR object. Um, and it will um, importantly could uh, contain these, uh, these three things. So it has a requester. So this is a field managed by the API server. Uh, and that contains the identity of the requester. So uh, perhaps this is the service A service account or indeed maybe um, a kubectl's um, identity. It then uh, has a signer. Uh, so this is a string which the requester has put. Um, and this uh, essentially labels what CA they want the request to be signed by. Uh, so they indeed can uh, label the uh, Kubernetes control plane, or this might be Vault or, or what have you. Um, and then the final thing is the X509 certificate sign request itself. Um, so service A creates this object. It will then be observed by something called an approver. Uh, so this is the RA we were talking about before, and they can choose to either approve the, re the request or, or, or indeed deny it with some kind of message. Um, assuming that the request has been approved, uh, it will then be picked up by a signer. So the signer is acting as the CA here, and the signer will do the actual signing. So it will read the certificate signing request, the X509 pen. Um, it will go ahead and then uh, sign that by 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 whatever CA or intermediate, what have you, update that Kubernetes object with the with the updated signed certificate. That will then get picked up again uh, by service A or kubectl or whatever uh, uh, created the object in the first place. Um, so to deep, uh, delve into a bit of YAML, that that's where the, uh, the the requester here. So in this case, it was uh, Kubernetes admin that created the request. The next is the signer name. Uh, so in this case, we're we're using uh, issuers. Um, a dot slash issuer just tech, and then finally the 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 approver section. So uh, this certificate signing request was approved um, through kubectl. So bring it back to Istio, and I just showed you the the flow of, of a typical um, how, how CSR works in Kubernetes. Um, it works um, much, much much the same. So service A um, uh, uh, will will request its CSR. So it's noting it's going through Istio D. So it's the same as normal Istio, uh, Istio operation. Um, it's getting, uh, it's requesting it's different from Istio D. Istio D is then the one to create the CSR object. Um, so it's going to create that object. It's also going to uh, approve that object. You see, Istio D is acting as the RA still. Once that's approved, um, depending on you know the signer, it will then go ahead and sign the different request, send it back to Istio D. That will finally send it back to 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 whatever workload requested it originally. Um, in this case, we have, um, or, or in the kind of current slide, we have um, the Kubernetes control plane configured as a signer. However, that can be problematic, um, as having the Kubernetes control plane sign the request means that your Istio mesh is sharing the same trust domain as your Kubernetes uh, control plane, um, and and really you'd want to want those to be in two separate control planes. Um, so we can use something like Cert Manager instead. Which is uh, uh, just a case of um, you know installing Cert Manager, adding an issuer, and then changing um, the, the 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 signer name that we use to to, to point to something else rather than the Kubernetes control plane. Um, and the end result is that we get um, our certificate authority uh, being signed by, you know, in this case, Istio CA, which might be uh, backed by some other issuer like Vault or something, um, and and uh, your 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 entire Istio mesh be, being signed through that method. The next option um, that I want to talk about is Istio CSR. So Istio CSR um, is an umbrella um, under the Cert Manager project. And um, Istio CSR is a service that you'd run inside your cluster. Um, so you just uh, run the deployment. Um, and uh, essentially what this is doing is, is it, it's exposing the same um, CSR service that Istio D um, uh, serves. Um, so Istio D will expose that gRPC service, which workloads connect to, to to get their, their certificate signed. Istio CSR, CSR is is exposing the same service. Um, however, instead of um, you know doing a self signed or reading from a secret, what have you, it's just going to convert that th those incoming requests into cert manager resources. Um, and so what that means is we could use Istio CSR to leverage um, all the issuers that cert manager supports. Um, so I have a uh, examples on the page. So there may be a uh, core issuer type for Cert Manager, like uh, like Benefy or Vault, um, or indeed external issuers um, that exist, like um, Google or AWS. Um, and what's neat about um, using you know Istio CSR uh, through through Cert Manager is that indeed you could write your own external issuer, um, and that would be um, and that would be valid not just for Istio, uh, so through Istio CSR, but also uh, Cert Manager more generally. 
So in this scenario, issue CSR, um, issue CSR is acting as the RA. It, it itself is taking the incoming requests and validating them. It will then create the cert manager resources. So cert manager is acting as the CA, and that follows on that cert manager will get the certificate signed through you know, Vault or what have you. Istio D um, isn't involved in this process at all. Here is um, a diagram um, of, of the ar architecture. Um, again, the Istio agent is requesting its certificates directly from Istio CSR, and, and you'll note that Istio D isn't present at all. One of the um, drawbacks um, to this approach, however, is that Istio D currently doesn't have functionality to itself request a certificate from a remote service. Um, and so in the kind of default installation of Istio CSR, um, we use something called a certificate resource in Cert Manager, which um, uh, results in a certificate and private key being written to a secret, which again um, is, is, is not the best because then we have private keys and, and, and certificates in, in cluster state. Um, there are uh, approaches to, to, to improve this. So Solar IO, for example, um, you'll run a, um, a sidecar proxy or a, a sidecar rather uh, next to Istio D. Um, and its sole purpose is to request that um, private key and certificate for Istio D. Um, and again, the benefit of doing that um, is you have absolutely no private key or, or certificate material um, uh, 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 kind of um, stored in, 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 in cluster state. That's right, because we find uh, from our customer, a lot of them doesn't want the private key to persist in Kubernetes. So we come up with this approach with the sidecar to Istio D to help solve that problem. Great, so um, the next is a demo. So I'm gonna show a quick demo of Istio CSR um, in action. Um, the idea here is that I will uh, show a cluster um, I'll have Vault installed, and so Vault will be uh, pre-configured um, with a certificate authority and an intermediate of that certificate authority, which we'll use to, to sign against. Um, we're then going to install Cert Manager along with a Vault issuer, which is basically some configuration to tell Cert Manager how to get certificates signed uh, through Vault. Um, then we'll install Istio CSR configured to use that Vault issuer. We'll then finally use uh, or install um, Istio, and Istio will be configured to to um, use Istio CSR, and then we'll install the kind of book info um, demo application, um, and we'll use that to to prove that Istio workloads are being are being signed through uh, signed through Vault. Great. So we switch over to the video. I'm just showing here that we have a cluster, and again uh, we have Vault installed there. Next, we're going to install Cert Manager. What this is going to do is um, install the Cert Manager APIs, uh, so the Kubernetes uh, custom resource definitions, um, uh, along with the Cert Manager controllers. Here, I am showing the certificate authority that's going to be used uh, that, that, that lives in Vault. Uh, I'm just showing here the you can see here that the organization is IstioCon 2022, um, and hopefully by the end of it, uh, we can see that our Istio workloads are being signed through that certificate authority. So we're going to um, create a secret with that certificate authority installed. Next is to install the Vault issuer. Again, this is a configuration used by Cert Manager, so it knows how to uh, talk to Vault and get certificates signed through Vault. If I get issuers, you can see that it's ready. The next is to install Istio CSR. Um, the key uh, thing to read there was uh, that we've uh, configured Istio CSR to um, use Vault as the issuer. Uh, so when Istio CSR has incoming requests, um, it's going to uh, use that Vault issuer when it's creating set manager resources. Great. Now that you've got that all installed, the next thing to do is take a look at the Istio configuration. Um, if I just pause it here, 
it's quite a bit to read in, but the most important thing um, uh, to take away from this is that we are uh, uh, configuring Istio to use the Istio CSR um, network address, the, 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 the host name um, of Istio CSR. Um, so what this is telling Istio is that it's saying configure all of the Istio workloads to request their certificates, not from Istio D, but from Istio CSR. Further down, what we are telling um, Istio D here is that we want to disable Istio D's uh, CA server functionality. So this would be you know, the, the kind of CA cert we were talking about um, earlier. And then finally, um, uh, in mounting in um, Istio D's um, private key uh, and certificate from the uh, from a set manager certificate. Great. So next thing to do is install Istio using that configuration we just used. So what's happening here is it's installing Istio D. Um, Istio D is starting up. It knows not to run its uh, CA server fun um, uh, functionality. Then we are now on oh no, Istio D. Once that's done, it's then going to install the um, egress and ingress gateways. Um, they behave much the same as Istio normal Istio workloads. Uh, so they will be requesting their certificates from, from Istio CSR. Great, verifying the installation, all looks good. Great, if I get bored, pods, you can see that everything's in a running state, so everything looks healthy. Um, I'm going to enforce um, uh, mutual CLS in strict mode, uh, just as a good practice. And finally, I'm going to install the book info demo. So this is just the same demo that's used uh, throughout the Istio docs. I'm gonna wait for uh, those pods to come up. Great. And the final thing I'm going to show in the demo is I'm going to use Istio CTL um, to uh, communicate with the Envoy proxy, um, and it's going to pull out um, its TLS certificate. Um, I'm then going to decode that certificate. And with any luck, we should be able to see that it was indeed uh, signed by that Vault CA that we that we showed earlier. So if we take a look, yeah, indeed, the issuer, the organization, the cert manager, and it's Istiocon 2022. So you can see that our certificate authority, our root of trust is from the, uh, the Vault instance. And yeah, indeed, you can see here that this a particular certificate was for the book info product page identity. Great. Back to the slides. Um, one last option um, that um, uh, that we wanted to talk about um, was Spire. So very recently. Um, you know, um, a, a few weeks ago, um, there was a PR that was merged um, into Istio, and uh, this PR will enable uh, Spire uh, support. So uh, your workloads can then now be, be 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 signed through through Spire. So if you're not familiar with Spire, um, it's a um, under the the the, the, the Spiffy um, uh, project, and it's a um, implementation of the Spiffy runtime environment. Um, and the benefit you have from Spire is that it has a uh, very strong um, attestation um, or it can be configured uh, to do attestation. Uh, so what's nice about Spire um, is that you can use things like you know um, hardware-based or cloud-based identity um, as, as part of your um, RA uh, process um, uh, that we mentioned before. Um, and um, yeah, so it, by, by kind of using Spire with Istio, all your uh, certificates are being through, signed through, through Spire um, and it becomes part of the Spire ecosystem. Um, it's worth noting, like I said, this was only merged you know, a few weeks ago, so it's not currently in any um, Istio release, but it, it isn't pinned for, for, for release 1.14.
Great. Um, so we've gone through quite a few options um, uh, today. So it's worth going through some pros and cons um, and just listing out all of the options again. Um, great. So the first one we talked about was the default uh, plugin method. Um, it's great because it's easy to get started. You know, it's by default. It's your CTL install. It's what you'll get. Um, the con of this, of course, is that it's self-signed. It's unprotected. Your uh, private keys um, are stored in a secret, um, and, and that might not be appropriate for you. Um, indeed, the the, the long duration uh, time and things like that. Um, the next one we went through was Kubernetes CSR. Uh, that's great. Um, your uh, certificate authority private keys are uh, stored off cluster. Um, Istio D's private key is, is stored off cluster, uh, is, is stored in memory um, rather, and the uh, CA's private key is stored off cluster. Um, the con of this is there's limited issuer support. Um, it's also labeled, of, of course, as experimental in the documentation. Um, we then talked about Istio CSR, which is great. Uh, there's a large number of issuers supported, um, and you know, the cert manager has a community around uh, building these external issuers. Um, the con is by default, the SDOD certificate um, is stored in a secret. Um, indeed, there are some ways to kind of uh, overcome this, but by default, that that's the case. Um, and then finally, uh, we had Spire, which has potentially greater um, attestation um, through the hardware or cloud-based um, identities. Um, and indeed, once you uh, connect to Istio with Spire, you, you, you enter your Istio mesh into, into the Spire ecosystem. Um, the con of Spire um, is that the um, the signing of Istio workloads happens in the Spire server. So you don't have the opportunity to um, view your workloads being signed through, um, you know, whatever uh, PKI dashboard perhaps um, that, that the organization use already. Um, you don't perhaps um, get the same um, auditing that you, that you would have done with, with other workloads um, signing elsewhere. Um, and indeed, yeah, it's it's currently not supported in, in, the, in 113 or, or before. Great. That's it from me.